just as sunflowers chase the sun. Inductees into the South Dakota Hall of Fame chase their dreams day after day, year after year. The 700 plus inductees in the Hall of Fame come from all backgrounds and corners of our state. What their stories have in common is their unwavering courage and belief in their dreams. These dream chasers are an inspiration for us all to strive for excellence and believe in our own potential to chase dreams well into the future. Two thousand six inductee Andre Larson and two thousand one inductee Dr. Wayne Knudsen are responsible for ensuring that the National Music Museum came home to the University of South Dakota. The collection was first founded by Andre's father, Arnie Larson, and with the help of Dr. Knudsen, the two established and grew the museum, which is nearing its fiftieth anniversary. The museum houses over fifteen thousand musical instruments, including many of the earliest best preserved and historically important instruments known to survive to this day. Dr. Peggy Banks, the current associate director, shares with us the history of the museum and how these two inductees made a huge impact on the campus of USD, the state of South Dakota and beyond. Hello, I'm Miles Beacom with South Dakota Hall of Fame and today I'm with the National Music Museum associate director, Dr. Peggy Banks. And Two of the individuals, prior inductees in the South Dakota Hall of Fame that we want to talk about is Dr. Wayne Knudsen, who was inducted in 2001, and Andre Larson in 2006. And when you look at what they were able to do here at USD with the Music Museum, uh, Dr. Banks, I just think it's amazing and it's probably one of the best kept stories in the state and that's one of the things that we really want to do is get that story out and share it so more people are aware of the mu uh, music museum that we have here at USD. And for you Dr. Banks, how long have you been with? As of this July 1st, I'm starting year 44, so I've been here for 43 years. Well congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I loved it, I stayed, I got hooked. And you had the opportunity to work with both Dr. Uh, Knudsen and Andre Larson? And Ernie, the, the fa father of Andre Larson as well. Oh. So yes, I did work with all these people. Well, I just think it's, uh, again, amazing that we have something as special as the Music Museum here at USD uh, on the campus here. And can you, have, do you have the history of how that all started and the work that went involved, that was involved with it to occur? Arnie had one other thing going on, and that was called collecting. In some respects, one might say a little bit of a musical instrument hoarder, in a sense. So he had this huge collection in Brookings, and then about 1964, when he was 60 years old, he thought, I gotta do something with this collection. What am I gonna do with it? I'd like to see it stay in South Dakota. I'd like to see it at a university, because he believed very strongly um, in teaching and education and research and performance. So it was about that time, 64, that I started looking around to see, well, what can we do with this collection? Who wants it? And of course they had eyes on USD, primarily because Andre had um, started his undergraduate degree here, which he got um, in uh, music education. He then went on to get a master's degree in, in uh, music with a minor in theater, which is where he met the other person of our conversation today, Wayne Knudsen, who was Arnie, uh, Andre's uh, mentor and professor. And I know for a fact, because I lived through part of this, is that Andre held Wayne in the highest esteem and uh, on a really high pedestal. And um, it was Wayne who Andre said, you need to be the catalyst for getting this collection solidified on the campus of South Dakota, and, and that he did. It was known as a one of the few permanent, collect, not permanent, but few collections of musical instruments privately owned in this country. And there were people, they, they hired a gentleman from the Smithsonian Institution to come evaluate it, as well as a gentleman from the University of Michigan. And they were just blown away with what Arnie had here. Dr. Banks, so about 15 instrument, 15,000 instruments now, started with about 2,000. Uh, were most of those gifts, the other 13,000, was it a pretty half and half 
between uh, people bought them, donated them. It's hard uh, to say that it, it's hard to say it would be half and half, but certainly um, a, a lot of the instruments were donations um, from people all over the country, not just South Dakota. One of the other things that really put us on the map as far as International Museum interest is concerned, <clears throat> in 1994, um, we were able to purchase a collection of North Italian stringed instruments that it was called the Witten Collection after a man from the East Coast named Larry Witten, who was a rare book dealer and instrument collector. And some of these are some of the oldest surviving stringed instruments in the world. And F Andre took a chance. Um, Andre was kind of savvy when it came to getting people to give money. <clears throat> and this collection, they wanted $3 million for it. It's over 100 instruments. And um, he, he was in competition, or we were in competition, with the major collections in Europe that wanted it, as well as the Metropolitan Museum of Art wanted it and others. So the bidding started, and Andre said, well, do $3 million. And Larry Witten accepted that, except we didn't have the money. So Andre took a chance, and he went out, flew out to the West Coast to our newest patron, who uh, patrons, I should say, who were um, Bob and Marge Rollins. And I, I wish I'd been a fly on the wall to hear how it went, but he came home with $3 million worth of stocks to purchase the collection, which is then renamed the Witten Rollins collection as it is known today.